Let me write a couple of uh, equations up here for you. y equals x cubed minus 7x squared plus 5x minus 3. I don't know why I made such a long one, but <clears throat> anyway. Um, and the second one is going to be our parametric equation. What we're used to are equations like this. y equals x cubed minus 7x squared plus 5x minus 3. We don't usually call them this, but <clears throat> these, comparison-wise, these are Cartesian equations. Referring to, uh, basically, the fact that, you know, we graph that, we've got x, we've got y, right? And so the, the y is related to the x this way in the Cartesian coordinate system. So we can refer to that as a Cartesian equation. This right here <coughs> is what's known as a parametric equation. So let's notice a couple of differences about the parametric equation. <coughs> the x and the y here, notice, I've got x and y defined, but they're defined in terms of a third variable, t. <clears throat> and so this t, yeah, is the same as that t. So I've got a third variable here, and that's called, the t is called the parameter. Hence, this is a parametric equation. So it's the idea of assigning the x and y values through a third variable <clears throat> called a parameter, t. T is the uh, parameter, and we'll use that most mostly for the parameter, but you could use theta. Uh, T could be thought of, the reason you do this, just to give you an application of it, uh, <clears throat> you can define lots of pretty wild curves very simply, and a lot of them use sines and cosines, but uh, you, can you can get a lot of weird wild curves out of this, whereas you know, Cartesian equations, we're usually thinking functions, one-to-one, -one, or uh, vertical line tests and all that. <clears throat> um, you, get, you can switch the x and the y's and get some other things. But with a parametric equation, we can get all sorts of loops and all sorts of, we'll see. We'll see how it <clears throat> goes out here. But uh, the parameter is usually, you can think of it either as an angle. T is like the angle on the x-axis or, uh, or from the x-axis, you know, like our, in our trig functions, theta. You can think of that. Uh, t is like, a, like an angle. Um, <clears throat> can be time. That would be very easy, t for time. Uh, as progression of time, x changes this way, y changes that way as according to time. Um, so there's lots of applications for using uh, parameters. Um, but the key thing here is, yeah, if I have a parametric equation where x equals some function of t and y equals some function of t, <clears throat> each value of t determines a point x, y. Just like we've got an x, y point here. Same thing with the parametric equations. Each value of t would give me an x comma y, right? If I said t is 1, t was 1, I would get an x value and I would get a y value. And so it's just like that. It's, uh, it's an ordered pair. So as far as graphing is concerned, it, it works much, much the same. Okay? <clears throat> All right, so let's <clears throat> take a look at an example here. Uh, we'll just sketch, sketch some curves because, of course, we want to relate it to our calculus ideas as well, but <clears throat> let's just start sketch uh, sketch the curve. That's what say. And we will do this one uh, first of all by hand, by table, whatever you want to call it. Sketch the curve x equals t squared minus 2t, y equals t plus 1. Is that the same thing I had? I think so. And then negative 2 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 3. We've got a boundary on our parameter there. 
And so one way we can do this, like I said, to sketch the curve by a table is, well, just like we did tables before, except our x's and y's are defined in terms of t, so we're gonna, in our table we're going to use t values. And in this case, we're going from negative 2 to 3. So how about we do negative 2 to 3 integers? <clears throat> and then you just plug it in, get the x, get the y, see where that, uh, see where that goes. All right. If t is negative 2, what do we get for x and y? Well, x would be what? Uh, 4, be 4 plus 4 would be 8. And y would be uh, yeah, that's eight, isn't it? And then y would be negative two plus one, so that's negative one. <clears throat> and so that will give me the point eight negative one. Okay, that's all we're doing. You're just we're just plugging in t values instead of x values or y values. Just plugging in t values. All right. So what do we get for negative one? T is negative one. We get negative one squared. Minus 2 times negative 1, hey, that's 1 plus 2, that's 3. The y value would be negative 1 plus 1, that's 0. When x is z, uh, t is 0, x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, what do we get? 1 minus 2 would be negative 1. 1 plus 1 would be 2 for y. Check me on these. When x, uh, t is 2, we get 4 minus 4, that's 0. And 0 plus, uh, I mean, 2 plus 1 is 3. And then when t is 3, we get 9 minus 6, that would be 3. And 3 plus 1 is 4. Did I do those right? <clears throat> 8, negative 1, 3, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 2, 0, 3, and 3, 4. All right, so yeah, we're just going to then, graph-wise, just plug those in on the graph. Uh, <clears throat> 8, negative 1. right there. And that's called the uh, our initial point right there. I'll make a point about this in just a second. All right, then we go to uh, 3, 0, 3, 0. Then we go to 0, 1, 0, 1. Uh, negative 1 and 2. And 0, 3. And 3, 4. So we got this initial point, and this is our terminal point. Some of them will just continue. I mean, you can kind of see where it's going to continue around, but since I've <coughs> defined my parameter boundaries there, here's what I've got. <coughs> initial point to terminal point. And then one other thing, one other uh, thing they like to note on these because of the the time thing and the angle thing is they <clears throat> they do like to show the uh, the movement here as we go from t is negative two to t is positive three the arrows indicate yeah we're going around here like that so if they ask you to put arrows to indicate the direction of movement that's all they mean <clears throat> we started here at the initial point went to that terminal point okay All right, and so you can see there, this is going to be a sideways parabola, isn't it? But we can define it with uh, with parametric equations. All right, here's a, here's another one. Let's do this one again by by a table, just to kind of get the feel for for what's going on here. We're going to do these with a calculator more often than not, but just to get the feel. Is that all right? Any problems with that? Here's another one. <clears throat> Sketch the curve by table. By using a table. All right, this is going to be x equals cosine t, y equals sine of 2t, and we're going to go 0 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 2 pi. And so here, <clears throat> obviously, what's t uh, basically playing the role of? It's obviously an angle, right? But let's see what happens. <clears throat> now, when you do these uh, angle ones, so we got t, then x, then y. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, we're going from 0 to 2 pi. Now, probably don't want to go 0, 1, 2, 3, right? Because t is basically an angle there. You might want to do some pi, pi angles. Let's see, what did I do? Pi over 4s. I did them by pi over 4s. This one's 0 to 2 pi. So pi over 4s give us a pretty good accurate picture. So go 0, pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, which is pi, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2, uh, where am I? 7 pi over 4, and 2 pi. And so that'll give a pretty good accurate picture for x, x's and y's, okay? So I can do some of these. <coughs> uh, we'll just do the decimal, uh, decimal ones here approximations if we need to. All right, so if uh, t is 0, we've got cosine of 0, that's 1. If t is 0, we've got sine, for y, sine of 0, which is 0. Pi over 4, cosine of pi over 4 squared to 2 over 2, but <clears throat> we'll just say that's 0 0.707. Map it on the uh, graph that way. And then we have sine of 2t, so that'd be sine of 2 times pi over 4, that would be sine of pi over 2, wouldn't it? Which is <coughs> sine of pi over 2, 1. All right. Then we go to t is pi over 2, so we have cosine of pi over 2, which is 0, and sine of 2 times pi over 2, that's sine of pi, so that is 0. <coughs> 3 pi over 4, okay. I said I'm just going to, probably should know know those, but you know, you just do, just do your uh, angles things here. Cosine of 3 pi over 4, it's negative 0.707. It'd be sine of two, so it'd be six pi over four, sine of six pi over four, three pi over two. It's negative one. I'm way off track here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, pi, cosine of pi, negative one. Uh, sine of two pi, zero. Okay, 5 pi over 4, cosine of 5 pi over 4, it's negative 0 0.707, square root of 2 over 2. Um, sine of 5 pi over 2, which is 1. 3 pi over 2, it's cosine of 3 pi over 2, 0. And it be sine of 3 pi, which is 0. Got lots of zeros here. That's why I did the pi over 4s, I think. 7 pi over 4, well, that's uh, positive 707, square root of 2 over 2. And then uh, sine of 7 pi over 2, that's back to negative 1. And then for 2 pi, cosine of 2 pi, all the way back around, that's 1. And cosine of 4 pi, that's 0. So anyway, <clears throat> with me? Believe all that? Think that's all right? Well, this is what I'm saying. We get some kind of interesting little curves. All right, so I'm mapping uh, these, plotting these, 1, 0. And I might want to do this. Let's make it 1 out here. Okay. So I spread it out a bit. Make 1 out a little bit there from what we usually do. <clears throat> so I've got 1, 0. Then I've got 0 0.7071. 1. So 0 0.707, how about right there? And there's 1. Then I've got 0, 0. So I'm back here at the origin. And so if I just plot the uh, direction here, I've kind of gone here. And it is, it is rounded. See that? 
All right, then where do I go? Negative 0 0.707, negative 1. So here's about negative 0.7, then negative 1. And then I'm at negative 1, 0. Then I'm at negative 0 0.707, positive 1. And then I'm at 0, 0 again, so I've gone kind of around the world here. And then I wind up going completely around the world because here we go. Kind of looks like a infinity symbol. Small one. <clears throat> what do you think? Interesting little curve, isn't it? And that's just using cosine t sine of 2t. Very simple curves, but that leads us, parametrically speaking, to a nice little uh, graph. Okay? Now, like I said, good to know that these things, how these things work. We're, we're choosing t's that gives us the x's and y's, how these things work out. <clears throat> now, what will be very helpful will be our graphing calculator tool right here. That'll help us. Uh, there, is, there is a parametric mode on graphing calculator. You have to change mode, though. <clears throat> on the TI-83s and 84s, it's pretty easy. Just go to mode. And then on the uh, four lines down, on the TI-83s, 84s, you see function, par, Pole and seek, SEQ. We want par, par for parametric. <clears throat> yeah, if we put it in uh, parametric mode, of course, function mode is what we normally are in, but if you put it in function uh, parametric mode, just go to it and enter, hit enter, and that changes its mode for the TIs now. That's what I'm talking about. Then if you go to the Y equals screen, what do you see? Yeah. If you go to the y equals screen then, it's not really y equals anymore, is it? It's y1, uh, x1t, how does it look on these? x1t, y1t equals equals. They got a bot line here. And then they've got x2t, y2t equals equals. So yeah, these are then paired up parametrically, right? So <coughs> This is saying I'm going to define x in terms of t. Well, let's, let's check our little work here. Let's do x1t is cosine t, and y1 is sine 2t. Uh, now, <clears throat> here's the thing. I think it's normally set up by default to be negative 2 pi to 2 pi. I don't think it'll matter here, but just be, be warned. If I want 0 to 2 pi, then I go to my window. Well, I didn't put my thing in, did I? All right, cosine t. And to get the t, you just hit the x. What we normally hit is the x button. It'll put in t then if you're in parametric mode. And then we do sine of 2t. Okay? And then, like I said, to get this particular parameter, 0 to 2 pi, just go to window on the TIs, on mine set up, 0 to 2 pi, which is 6.2283. Um, <clears throat> you can change, uh, it's got T min and T max, and we want T min to be 0, T max to be 2 pi. And it, on the TIs, it, uh, it adjusts it to decimal, 628, or mine does anyway. Does yours do it? Okay. <clears throat> 628. And then, uh, you know, on the, the T step, that's kind of like the scale. You know, we did it pi over fours, but that was just because I didn't want to do a whole, whole lot of hand calculations. So we do want the T step here to be probably a little more. Uh, let's see. Let me see what mine is. Which is 0.13. So that's uh, pi over something. Twenty-eight 
24? Yeah, I think it's set up to be pi over 24. So that's a pretty good step. It, it's doing a lot more than we're doing. Okay? And then your scale, you know, your scale is the same. That's just what you want to see in your window there. So x min negative. So let's, I don't need it very big, so let's just say x min is negative 2 to positive 2. And same thing for y. See if we get that. Ta da! <clears throat> yeah, you're in degree mode. Be sure you're in radian mode, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, be sure. Yeah, your uh, angle mode, be sure you're in radians. That's also the mode you need to be in here, not degrees. Okay. All right, so yeah, uh, they, like I said, they use pi over 24. I think that's default. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, these will be nice for us. Okay. All right, <clears throat> so graphing, no, no problems here. Um, matter of fact, if you want to go back and let's check the other one. The first one was uh, x x equals t squared minus 2t, y equals t plus 1, we went from negative 2 to 3, <coughs> see if this is what we get, uh, see if we got a match there, t squared, minus 2t, t plus 1, And we want, to get the exact match, we want negative 2 to 2. So t min is negative 2, t max is positive 3. T step, leave it there. Oh, we'll have to change our window, won't we? X max needs to be maybe 10. No, it needs to be a little harder. Oh, y max, y max. There we go, yeah. So we get that little, nice little match there. Okay, <clears throat> looks good. <clears throat>